created by our situation, our circumstances, and what is holding us in a position. A lot of times, fear has snared us in a place where we can't move. That's why we put up blocks, and we put up barricades, and we put up things that trap us into a position of fear. And we don't want to say, God, help me. We don't want to move from the place where we say, God, I hear your voice, and I want to move. Yes. Like he said, there's no one to put me in the pool. Uh -huh. <laughs> there's no one. Yes. Amen. He, he didn't know, he didn't understand that help was right with him. Mm. Amen. He didn't understand that if the water was troubled, this might be the person that could help me get in the pool. Uh -huh. Woo -hoo -hoo. Uh -huh. he, he just wanted to be in that spot on that mat, uh -huh. chilling. Woo. Mm -hmm. Saying, God, or, or saying, I'm in a place of mercy. Everybody is paying and giving me what I need. What they're feeding me. They're, 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 they're teaching me how to be and to believe. But I'm comfortable mm -hmm. being blocked up and barricaded in my own little space. Mm -hmm. Amen. Blocked and barricaded in a place where I don't have to grow. I just have to receive. That's why the Bible said it's better to give than to receive. A lot of people are receiving the blessing, but they're not giving out the word of God, the will of God for people's lives, and they're not moving into a place where they can be used of God. My, my, my. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think sometimes our understanding is torn between being comfortable and moving to a place where God can get the glory out of our lives. Mm. I think when the, when the Lord spoke to him and said, get up! Yes. It was time to understand I have to move. Mm -hmm. Some people get that that unction in their spirit, but yet they don't want to move. Sometimes I'm going to give you a testimony. Amen. All right. The pool of Bethesda was stirred over here. Amen. Yes. We have two people come and we weren't expecting what happened to happen in the house. Amen. Amen. They came and they were, we were just praying, and we knew that something was different. Mm -hmm. They both uh, 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 got into a place where they were trying to receive from God. Mm -hmm. And when you see, when when people get together in this unity, uh, amen, and then God can do something in that place. Yes. And the unity of the Spirit brought us to the pool of the desert where we all got in the pool. Yes, we did. Amen. It wasn't just one of them. Yes. It wasn't just two. Yes. Both of them received the Spirit of the Holy Ghost or the, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, uh, and we got we got the overflow. Yes. <laughs> Yes. And you gotta know when God's calling you. Uh, Some yes. people don't know how to get into that place when God is moving and, and get their blessing too. Mm. So, like I said, we all got in the pool together. Yes. The water was stirred, and we all said, Lord, I thank you. Yes. And we all went up in tongues. Yes. But God wants to get you to a place where you receive from yes. Him yes. because of your level of understanding. Yes. Because of how you believe God. Yeah. How you move in the spirit. Uh -huh. How you move to a place where God is only you. And that's what I need. Hallelujah. You know, because we can receive from, from different places. We can receive from different, different people. We can receive from the church. We can receive mercy from other individuals. But we need the mercy of God. Yes. And the grace of God to be in our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. I think that his understanding had no creative thought mm. because the brother was settled. The mm. brother was in a, a, a place where, like I said, he was barricaded in. Yes. Had his food, mm. had his had his mat, had his uh, place. I'm pretty sure he had a cover up on. You know, when it gets hot in Texas, <laughs> you need some cover. <laughs> I'm sure, huh? I'm sure that, uh, uh, the, the, he had a little cover up on him and he, he, he was comfortable. Man. He, he, was in a, he was in a position. Like, G, like the word of God said, he's seen that he had been in that position for a long time. Yes. You know, sometimes we're in the church in a position for a long time when we ain't moving. Mm. 
I'm talking to you leaders. Amen. Sometimes we're in a position for a long time when we ain't moving. Mm. Ain't God saying something to you? Mm. It's time to move. Yeah. It's time to get up mm. out of that position and move forward in God. Oh, I know that uh, as we have grown in different ministries, I think that when God started uh, shifting the atmosphere in order to push us out to ministry, I think it was kind of strange, mm -hmm. but we knew it was time to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we knew it was time to move. Yeah. And I say this because when we started the ministry, God was with us every step of the way. Mm -hmm. We jumped out in the water. Mm -hmm. You know, as Peter said, uh, 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 Lord, yes. if it's you, mm -hmm. bid me to come. Amen? Amen. And the Lord said, well, come. Hallelujah. And we out here in the water and we do what God say do. A lot of times we, we might we might uh, uh, look at us uh, in, in a certain situation, but God is moving on our behalf. Yes, Lord. And I thank God for seeing the Bible says signs and wonders yes. shall follow them that believe. Hallelujah. And if we do not know that signs and wonders are not following us. It's something strange in the land because people are being moved, people are being stirred, people are walking yes. in places they never walked before. And don't you know that faith is a continual movement? Mm, it don't settle down. It don't settle down. <laughs> it don't one place. Yes. Faith is a continual forward movement. That's why it says, without faith it's impossible to please God. Mm. Amen. It's just like a uh, uh, going, moving, or, or driving a car with no reverse. <laughs> you cannot go backwards unless you're pushing. Yeah. So if you're pushing against God, you need to get in the driver's seat and press the gas. Hallelujah. And know that God is making this vehicle to go a certain way. And yeah. that is forward and uh, not backwards. Amen. Because mm -hmm. when you backslide, mm -hmm. it's like you lose something. Mm -hmm. When you go back to, to, to like the Bible says, the dog it returns to his body. When you go back, yes. you lose something. Mm. Amen? And we don't want to lose nothing in this progression that we're, 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 where God is moving us and motivating us and making us who he needs us to be. Yes. Now, yes. if you look at 38 years of limitation, mm. you would say that there is a problem with his understanding. Mm. If you say... 38 years under the grace of God. Mm. And there's no movement. You settle. There's a problem. 38 years of God's grace on your life. Yet and still, there is no movement. Yes. Hey, there, there has to be something moving because of faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think that um, when we limit God in our faith, yes. that's when we start, that's, that's the beginning of us starting to die. Mm -hmm. When we limit God, doing something great in our lives, doing something spectacular, uh -huh. when we limit him and, and, and try to say, this is just my portion, mm -hmm. we lose wow. something and God wants us to push. He wants to push us yes. into a place of, of, of glory. Amen. You know when they say glory, it's like a, it's like a bright light shines in your life. You say glory. Yeah. Hey, something, something, an uh, uh, ocean comes in your spirit. You yes. just have to say hallelujah. Yeah. I thank God for making a way for me. Yeah. Amen. Let me give you a different definition of grace. Mm -hmm. Um. It says the free and unmerited favor of God as manifested in the salvation of sinners and the bestowal of blessings. All right. Now, God is he, he's trying to give you an explanation of his grace. Mm. It's free. It's unmerited. Mm. It's favor. Mm. Amen. And it's manifested in your salvation. Hallelujah. And the bestowals of blessings that God puts in your life. People he puts around you. Things that he gives you as a result of you serving him. Things that happen in your life as a result. Uh -huh. 
Uh, you need on your side. Yes. Well, got, you know they say that God is not a respecter of persons, but I know that if you are serving God, He will bless you. Uh -huh. Amen. He will bless you more than somebody that ain't serving Him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, it also says that it's courteous goodwill. Mm. <laughs> He's courteous to you and has goodwill in your life. Amen. Mm -hmm. He He gives you things that you're not expecting. Yeah. And it's free. I, I ain't gonna say that <laughs> because y'all might y'all might uh, y'all might not like me if I said that. But you know, some people like free stuff. <laughs> I ain't gonna say a certain group of people, but a lot of people like free stuff. And, and, and when it's free, they want more and they want more and they want to come back and they want to come back again. But you know, I think that sometimes God's grace yeah. is just on your life. And you got to know, and you got to receive it, and you got to also believe that his grace pushes you Hallelujah. into another, another realm of him. It's, a, it's the condition or fact of something being favored by someone. Mm -hmm. Woo. Have you been favored by God? Yes. Have you been favored in your life? Mm. Has there been anybody gave you favor because of what you do? Mm. Or how you living, yes. or, or 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 just uh, you being you. Yes. Hey, I know. <laughs> Faith is good. Amen. <laughs> His grace is good. Amen. And and then it also says that the pool of dust was a place of God's mercy. Yes. Now he was laying on his mat, receiving God's mercy. Ah. <laughs> ah. Thank you, Lord. They feed him every day. Hey, you, they, they, you know, they didn't say he was skinny. They didn't say he was... He, <laughs> they didn't say that he was poor. They said he was an invalid. Mm -hmm. They said he's, you know, an invalid is somebody who is invaluable in society. What you say? So, an invalid in this place, mm. receiving God's grace and his mercy. Mm. <laughs> what you say? He was on, he was say. I'm living the good life. You know they sing those songs about living the good life. Mm -hmm. He was living the good life. All right. And and didn't have to do anything, but God had to show him that I got more for you. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna read you the definition of grace, but I can I can say this: mm -hmm. compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone mm -hmm. whom it is. Within one's power to punish or to harm. Right. You know, God, God has the power to punish. Mm. He has the power to 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 take some things from you. Mm. But why would He be a good God if that's all He did was mm. take, take, mm. take, take, mm. and never give you something that you can live? Yes. You know, He was living in a constant state of fear. Uh -huh. Two areas. Uh, uh, where uh, 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 he was committed to. All right. He was living in a constant state of fear and in a place of despair. Because he was in despair because there was no hope for his change mm -hmm. in his mind. There was no hope for his movement or for him to get to the pool to be healed. Mm -hmm. he, had, he had no clue mm -hmm. or no ability, like he said, to get to the pool. Right. Because no one would help him. Mm. You know, when help comes, sometimes you gotta recognize the help. Yes. Jesus was there talking to him. If somebody is talking to you in a place of despair, mm -hmm. they're there to help you. Mm. Somebody is talking to you in a place where God's grace and his mercy is 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 uh is prevalent, mm -hmm. and you know that God's grace is in this place, why would God send somebody to help you? Mm. You know, this is the understanding he had. I'm in despair. Mm. You know, I, I, I can't make it. Mm. I just got to be here. This is just what I'm going to be, mm. what I'm going to be, and how I'm going to be. Okay. And a constant, like I said, living in a constant state of fear. You know, when you're afraid, um, it paralyzes you. Mm -hmm. You don't want to move. You don't want to uh, uh, move forward. You don't want to have progression in your life because you think, something might mess up. Mm. Or you think something might happen that, that puts you in a worse position. Yes. Or something might happen that, that uh, you can't
control, or manipulate. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. A constant state of fear. Uh -huh. But God is trying to get you to a place where you appreciate him. Right. And you know mm -hmm. that he has done something great in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. He wants to change you at that pool. Yes. <laughs> he wants to change your attitude, your understanding at that pool. I think if we look at a pool of water, mm -hmm. if you go under the water, you're submerged in something that you cannot control. All right. <laughs> and he went to a place mm -hmm. where he could be, you know, submerged in something he can't control and come out brand new. Brand new. <laughs> come out with a new attitude. Mm. Come out with a new understanding. Mm. Come, out, come out with a new thought process. Yes. Just like it says in Proverbs, the fourth chapter, if I read it in the Amplified, it says the beginning of wisdom, oh, the beginning of wisdom is, read out the Amplified, it says, get skillful mm -hmm. and godly wisdom. Mm -hmm. It is preeminent. Mm -hmm. And with all your acquiring, get yes. understanding. Yes. Actively seek mm. spiritual discernment, oh, glory. mature glory. comprehension, glory. and logical interpretation. Mm. We got to come to a place where we want to know the truth. Amen. And we want to use the will of God or the word of God in, in making us understand what God is doing. What God is, is, is proving in our life, how he's moving to us to a place where we can be skillful and we can see that God, uh, we can seek God in, in actively, yeah. spiritually yeah. discerning things. Uh -huh. You know, when you discern something, it's an insight beyond your natural ability. Uh -huh. And when God is just, you are discerning by the Spirit of God. Is something other people don't have. Mm -hmm. You know, spiritual discernment is different than regular discernment. It's two, it's, two, it's, you know, it's a dual thing. Because you can have some understanding of what people do and how they uh, operate in life, but it ain't spiritually discerned. It's just a natural discernment. But when God puts insight into you into something inside somebody's life, and it's something that you know that you don't, you, you have no clue about. Amen. And it's by the Spirit. It's something different. Yes. And I had to learn that because a lot of things we can discern naturally. Mm. But spiritually is another, is another factor. Amen. Mm. I thank God for being able to spiritually discern people. Mm. Because when you're able to discern people, you know who to get away from. <laughs> you know who is not out for your good. And you know yes, when Lord. people are playing the game Ooh. with the Spirit of God. Amen. Yes, and you know when people come into church and they ain't trying to change. Uh -oh. They ain't trying to move. Mm. They ain't trying to do God's will. Oh, you know, I think that if, if you look at the people that you hang around, mm. and if it's not a kindred spirit, mm. there, uh, uh, there's a scripture in the Word that says to mark them that cause division among you. What you say? And That's what I say. Amen. Yes. Romans 16 and 17. You gotta mark those who come into the place to try to change your attitude and your thought press process about God. Uh -huh. Because your discernment has to kick in when people are telling you something that's against mm -hmm. what God is telling you in the spirit. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got one more scripture. Ezekiel 37 and 3. And it's talking about the valley of the dry bones. Now, I'm going to read out a new living translation. It says, And he asked me, Son of man, can these bones become living people again? He said, O oh, sovereign Lord, <laughs> I replied, you, you have, have, you alone know the answer to that. Mm. A lot of times there are dead folks in the church. <laughs> but can these bones live? My job, can these bones be troubled again? Amen. Can you be changed by this pool of Bethesda? Can you be changed by God's mercy? Can you be changed by his grace? It's only 
really when you come to God with a pure heart and a mind to do His will. Mm -hmm. Can these both live? I, you know, I know I was dead in the world. I know I had no access mm -hmm. and no no real mind to really understand who God was mm -hmm. or who God is. Mm -hmm. But when God got a hold of me, He could have asked me that same question. Can these bones live? Woo. I said, Lord, only you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know because I was dead in mm. my sin. Mm. If I would have died the day before I got saved, I would be in hell right now. Mm -hmm. And I thank God that he saved me. Mm. The, 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 the phrase that caught me was, while the blood is still running, more me no thing. Yes. Yeah. It got me out of seat. <laughs> Got me crying to the altar. And you know, I think that some people need to know if you don't change, yeah. you're going to die in your sin. Mm -hmm. You're going to die in a place where you try and you old and you don't know that God is a Savior. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to tell you today yes. that you can live. All right. You can jump in the pool and we can get in there together. Right? You ain't got to get in by yourself. Not yourself. <laughs> God is. Sending you a lifeline. Yeah. Amen. Jump in the pool. Because Jump it's coming pool. a day when people are going to be living like zombies and don't know the left from the right. But God is still mm. trying to give you the word that you need today. Yes. It is. Get saved. <laughs> no God. Yes. Amen. Jump in the pool. Jump in the Amen. pool. Amen. Because uh, what, what, what you got to understand is if you don't surrender and you don't submit uh -huh. and you don't sacrifice your time and your life to God, mm. there is never going to be a change and you're going to stay in that place. My, my, my. <laughs> Submitted mm. to what your circumstances is. But God is calling you today. Yes. He's calling you. Mm. Surrender to his will. Yes. Submit unto his authority. Hallelujah. And sacrifice your life mm. to be a soldier in the army of God. Hallelujah. It's my time. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Yes. God is it, it, it. matter of fact, we're gonna say the sinner's prayer. Yes. If there's anyone out there that don't know God, I want you to repeat these words after me. God I'm a sinner, but I know that you have come to change my life today. I need you. I confess my sin. I'm a sinner, but I know I need you. I know that God raised Jesus from the dead and that you have given me a key to change my life and turn my life around. I need you. Yes. More than I ever needed anybody. Mm. More than I ever needed my mama or my daddy. Yes. Because this is a new birth that I need. Amen. And this new birth in you, God, is God. what I need right now. I submit, I surrender, and I give you my heart. And I, I thank you for coming into my life. Yes, Lord. And I ask you, God, save me. Yes, Lord. Save me today. Make a change in my heart. Hallelujah. Make a change in my life. Yes. Lord. Because I know you can. Yes. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right. Any prayer requests? Uh, or if you want to give a testimony, you can send it to www.kimministries.com and we will receive it and we will respond. respond. Amen. And we will pray for you. <laughs> Hallelujah! In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. God is good all the time. <laughs>